Hello, this is John Chernus again, and in this lesson we're going to be studying the transport layer, which is layer 3 in the four-layer TCP IP model. And what we're going to do is actually study two protocols, TCP transport control protocol and UDP user datagram protocol in this lesson. What we're going to see is some frames contain UDP and some frames or packets contain TCP but you're never going to see one particular frame or packet that has both of those protocols TCP and UDP in them. It'll either be one or the other. So the best way to study this is to get right to it and open up that previously captured session I did at the beginning of the lessons when I went to the San Diego State University web server. So I'm going to start up Wireshark a little differently than I normally do when I just double click here on Wireshark. What I'm going to do is go to my documents just to show you so when you're doing your own uh, uh, part of this project you're going to be able to do this also you can actually open up this lesson underscore capture one dot pcap file directly by just double clicking as long as you have Wireshark installed in your computer if you just double click it will automatically start up Wireshark and load the uh, file for you load the capture file and we can see that this is definitely the same file we were dealing with. We have the two ARC frames here with the same IPs and MAC addresses, physical addresses. We have the DNS packets here, three and four, that have the query for San Diego State's website. We have the IP address provided in the fourth frame for San Diego State's website. So this is clearly the same, the, uh, the same one that we've had. Let me close this, okay. So we're ready to go here. So what I wanna do is illustrate very quickly what's the difference between UDP and TCP well the first thing is with UDP it's what's known as a connectionless protocol there is no connection established so we're going to learn in this lesson what that means what is a connection I remember when I was learning this I didn't understand what a connection meant well by using Wireshark we can actually see with live data or here in this case pre-captured data that I did earlier uh, what a connection is and what a connection isn't what we're going to do is go back to these DNS frames and we're going to see that DNS, uh, as you recall, I mentioned DNS is an application layer protocol. It's the fourth layer of the TCP IP model. But we need to dig a little deeper here. So let's take a look at this. With DNS, when I'm highlighted and clicked on packet number three here, if I look down below here, remember this is kind of upside down. This is the fourth layer, the application layer. This is the third layer, the transport layer, and you see right away it uses UDP or user datagram protocol. That's what I want you to know for now. And then we see the internet protocol layer or IP, the internet layer, that's layer two. And then where it says ethernet two here, that's the network access layer or ethernet one. This just summarizes the entire frame where it says frame three. So it's kind of backwards. This is again, layer four, DNS, layer three, UDP, layer 2 IP or internet and layer 1 uh, the network access or sometimes called the link layer so when you're looking at uh, a protocol analyzer most of them are always oriented in this way so you have to keep that in mind so we can see that when the DNS protocol is used as an application layer protocol it kind of determines what happens in the lower layers layer 4 the protocol used in layer 4 this is true for any type of application layer protocol it determines really what happens in layers 3, 2, and 1. So when we're using DNS, what we're saying is we don't need reliability of delivery. We're just sending out a frame, a one packet asking, in this case, what's the website, uh, at, what's the IP for the website for San Diego State University? It's a very simple one packet piece of information. And then there's just one simple response coming back from that DNS server, giving me, the user, the IP address of the SDSU website. And I see that in this answer right here. So that doesn't require reliability of delivery because if we don't get the answer, we'll just at some point send out that packet again uh, to try to get it. So it's just a small amount of data involved. We don't need it to be reliable. It's called best effort delivery. We're just going to throw that packet out there on the wire and most of the time it will get there. It's when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands of packets that comprise an entire file or like a picture file or a large document, that kind of thing that's when you really need the reliability because if one packet out of the 1000 in your stream of packets is bad then the whole file becomes corrupt 
and that's why some protocols use TCP, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But let's focus on UDP right now. So UDP is used by DNS. So when you use DNS for getting a, a, an IP address for a friendly user uh, name that's called a FQDN or fully qualified domain name like www.sdsu.edu, we use UDP. So let's see what's in that actual header here. Again, when we're looking at user datagram protocol down below here, we're actually looking at the transport layer in the four layer TCP IP model. And we see we don't have a lot of information here. We have a source port, a destination port, the length of the field, and then a checksum for error checking. What I want to focus on are the source port and the destination port. The source port is a number associated with my computer and my application on my side of the communication because this frame, frame 3, is coming from me by, identified by my IP address. I'm the source. The destination is the DNS server here, 172.27.35.1. This destination port is the port number associated with the application running on the other side of the communication, and that's the port number 53 for DNS. These lower number port numbers are called well-known port numbers, and they're associated with very uh, typical types of services. They're generally called core services like FTP, DNS, DHCP, very fundamental networking services that are provided uh, in many cases by servers out on the internet. And this is just like that example. This is a server out on the internet that's, whose purpose is to provide IP addresses for queries for host names like the San Diego State web server. So these, these port numbers, what I'm getting at, you're going to find these port numbers always in the transport layer. It's a very fundamental concept. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's TCP or UDP in this case. Port numbers have to exist because that's the linkage between the two applications on the two sides of the communication. When my computer is talking to this server, at uh, the DNS server, the relationship between my computer and that server is through these port numbers. So when I'm providing this port number in this packet and it arrives at the DNS server, that DNS server knows what the purpose is of this packet. This packet is to answer a question from my computer and it's going to go through what's known as port 53. So there's a service running on that server that does the DNS uh, service that's associated with port 53. That's just a number associated with an application or a service and that application and service on that server is a DNS service. That's how the packet when it arrives in the server can be processed appropriately. A lot of servers out on the internet are doing many things. FTP, DHCP, DNS, all kinds of different, don't worry if you don't know what all those things mean. It, they can do all kinds of different services. So when a frame comes in or a packet comes into the server, how does the server know what to do with that packet? What makes it know what to do is the port number on the packet as it arrives in. The applications and operating system will look at that number to figure out what it has to do with that packet based on that number. So since 53 is associated with DNS, it gets pushed up into the DNS service for processing on the DNS server to make a long story short. But we don't see any kind of reliability mechanisms in here and basically we have to have many other things for that to happen but we don't care because this is UDP we don't expect reliability we don't have anything like an acknowledgement an acknowledgement would be like sending a letter in the mail uh, and asking for return receipt paying an extra you know ten twenty dollars for certified mail return receipt that's not what we have here what we have is best effort what we have here is like when you put a letter in the mailbox and you hope it gets there if it gets there great if it doesn't get there it doesn't get there you may have to send another one if it never arrived, if it got lost somewhere. Uh, you just put the same letter uh, with a different stamp on it and uh, put it in the mail again to send it again. That's kind of what we have here. It's called best effort delivery. This is used very often when you have frames that don't have a lot of information in them. They're just very small size frames. And you notice here this frame only has 72 bytes on the wire. That's pretty small. If I click here, this one only has 88 bytes on the wire. A byte is a character of data. So these are very small packets asking simply, uh, I'm trying to get the IP address for San Diego State's website on packet number three, frame three, and frame four, I'm getting the answer. We went over that before. Uh, this is very small, quick little communications, and those are very typically associated with UDP. Connectionless protocol, no connection established, we don't know what a connection is yet, but we will learn that shortly here. Uh, but that's basically UDP in a nutshell. The key to understand it is there is no connection because you don't see any type of um, uh, 
what's called a negotiation or a handshake. We're going to learn what that means later, but it's a dead giveaway by just opening up the packet and looking for you know, the transport layer, which is layer three. And if you see user datagram protocol, you know it's a best effort delivery and there is no uh, connection established. And again, before I wrap up this first part on UDP, uh, basically the application layer protocol determines what happens in the next layer below. The application layer protocol is the fourth layer. If we're going to use DNS in this example that I've been going over, what happens in the third level in the transport layer is UDP. UDP will be the protocol used because that's what DNS requires because DNS doesn't require a connection. When we look at our next part, when we go to HTTP, we're going to see that HTTP, HTTP does require a connection and that's why we're going to need TCP. But we'll go ahead and end right now, and in the next lesson, we will go over TCP and relate it to HTTP and look at connection-oriented protocols.